Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how we can make FOV detection in Rec Room. Now you might know that FOV detection is field of view, um, basically what you see around like whatever I see currently in Rec Room is my FOV. But we're going to make today a FOV detection with circuits that detects if you're looking at an object. <clears throat> So we're not going to waste any time, but just get started into making the circuitry. So first of all, you need to have a room to create your circuitry in, of course. And now we're going to start working with, our, with the chips that we need. I'm going to go and place all of them out real quick. And I'll be also explaining during this video each process I'm doing and why it, I'm doing it. Because I want you guys to understand why, you, like how this works and why it works and all of that. Because I don't want you guys to leave this tutorial confused. <clears throat> so to begin with, we're gonna grab a toggle button. Just place that here. Then we're gonna go grab a get position. Then we're gonna get a get rec room object get first with tag. <clears throat> Since we need to um, get the actual object we're going to be wanting to get um, the FOV detection from. Get another get position and place it next to that one, or next to the get first with tag. Next, grab a subtract chip and place it next to the get positions, like that. Then we're going to need a vector normalize. And I'll explain later why we need these chips, as I said. Then we're going to need a vector free dot, a get local camera forward, a greater or equal, an if chip. We're going to need an event receiver. <clears throat> Place it there, good. <clears throat> We're gonna need a two string and a text. Now you can use whatever you want. I'm gonna use a actually to make it to make it so that it shows easier how that it works. I'm gonna use a get uh, or a show local subtitle because it's a bit hard otherwise to see if it actually works. Because I was gonna make it originally show on a text, but it can be a bit hard for it to see sometimes. Or to see the text sometimes <clears throat> and configure this event receiver we ha have right here to 30 hertz now these are actually all the chips that we need um, and let's get started to wiring all right so now we're gonna move on to the step of wiring these chips together and this is also the part where I explain why we're wiring the chips together and all of that oh yeah um, so we're also, I forgot to mention this, but you're gonna need an object, um, or any type of shape. You can place it on any shape you want, I'm gonna go with a sphere, um, perfect sphere, great. And place it wherever you want to, just place it, I, I like to place it close to the circuitry. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, yeah. then you wanna uh, go in, and then you wanna configure the object. And go down to tags and you want to add a tag. I'm gonna add the tag FOV to this object and then I'm also gonna configure um, this recruitment object at first with tag to have the value FOV in it. So now that so why we're doing that is because now this object is output is being outputted here since we're since it's getting the the first object with the tag FOV and outputting it and that would be the sphere in that case or the circle. Okay, so let's get started to wiring these chips together. First of all, we're gonna wire the maker, the rec room object get first with tag to the get position and the player get position. Next, we're gonna want to wire the get position of the get first with tag to the top part of the subtract and then the player position to the bottom part of the subtract. Hi, editor hot dog here. Now, during the recording of this video, I 
really I explained this subtraction in a such a weird way that you guys would be confused as heck so I'm just gonna explain it here really quick and so that it actually makes sense so the reason we're subtracting the rec room object at first with tag with the position of the player that pressed the button is because once we do that it will take the position of the object and subtract it with our position and that will create a vector that's kind of in between the circle and the player and why we're and why that's a good thing is because then we have kind of a vector which is basically where we want to be looking for our fov detection to function yeah i hope this isn't too confusing so we're here to the vector free normalize wire that wire the result of that to the vector free dot and then wire the get local camera forward now it doesn't matter you can wire the vector free normalize to the to right hand side or left hand side it doesn't matter and you can wire the get local camera forward to the right hand side in this case now why we are doing this is because so first of all we're normalizing the subtraction. Now, what does that mean by normalizing? Well, it basically makes it so that the vector has a magnitude of one. Now, the magnitude of a vector is basically the length of a vector. Um, right now, if, if we subtracted here, or if I subtracted like, if I wire, hover over this, you can see that this object has a, has a position of 2.7, 1.7, and 6.6. .6. Normalizing that basically makes us that the vector is 1, 1, 1, but the position does not change at all. It's the same position, but it's just a different, uh, but it's just a different coordinate, so it's always going to be 1, 1, 1. Um, so the magnitude of this vector currently is 2.7, 1.7, and 6.6, .6, but if I normalize it, the, ve the magnitude is just going to be simply 1. And <clears throat> we're also putting that into a vector dot with a get local camera forward. Now, why we're doing that is because now we're checking if the subtraction. So, what vector free dot does is it checks how similar two vectors are. Basically, if like how similar positions ha do they have? If I wire this normalized subtraction into the vector free dot with a get local camera forward, it will tell me how similar. Like, basically, how close am I looking to this object, or how close am I not looking to this object? Since we have the subtraction, it has created a vector in between us, and it's basically somewhere in the middle. And getting my local camera forward basically means the camera where, or basically where I'm looking. If I look closely to this, then the vector free dot would be, pre would be at a pretty high number, since that is very similar. Since the vector's in between us, and I'm looking basically right at it so the vectors would be very similar the further i move away from the object the lower that the number is on the vector free dot since i'm not since the vectors are not that similar since i'm not looking directly at the orb or the vector that's in between the object and i and the reason we normalize it actually is because that if you normalize the vector before placing it into a vector free dot it will be easier to check um with the vector free dot if I normalize the vector, it will just output a number between 0 and 1. 0 being uh, complete opposite vectors, and 1 being the exact same vectors. If I did not sum normalize it, it would be a number, it could be like a number from, I believe, like 1 to 10 or something. I, it's, it's, no, not an even number, it's like a super confusing number. But uh, I just recommend before you even do anything with vector free, don't normalize the vector. You don't have to normalize to get lo local camera forward, but you could if you want to, just not necessary. Okay, I think I'll stop talking now and get back to wiring. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wire the result of the vector free dot to the A port on the greater or equal. And on the B port, we're gonna put in, I like to do 0 0.9. Again, I told you, the higher the number is, the, the more similar the vectors are. And since it's going from 0 to 1, 0 0.9 is pretty similar. And that is basically being used to check if I am looking at it or not. Or basically, yeah, it's basically checking if I'm looking at it or not in this case. <clears throat> You'll get it to see in action soon. So we're going to wire the result of the boolean to this two string right here. And then we're going to wire the result of that to the subtitle part on the show local subtitle. Then down here, um, on the event receiver 30 hertz, we're gonna we can wire the output of it to the if chip, 
and then the condition is going to be is pressed on the toggle button. Now why we want that is because we don't want it to just update all the time and we only want it to update when this button is pressed so that um, we save ne uh, ne networking heat and stuff like that so we don't accidentally waste it. <clears throat> and then you want to wire the then port of the if over to the show local subtitle. So that basically does, so whenever a button is pressed in this case, uh, or whenever the button is pressed in that case it will update this show local subtitle at 30Hz which is uh, maybe an over exaggeration, but I can't control. I'm not making a hertz reducer today. <clears throat> and that should be all the chips that's required. So let's see if this works now. Alright, so now we're going to be testing if this actually works. So we enable this, so we press the button. Right now you can see that it says false. That's because I'm not looking at it. I'm look like the vectors are not that similar, but if I turn to it, you can see that it turns true. If I look away, it says false. If I look at it, it says true. Now again, if you want it to actually show, like the higher the number that you put in here, the more precise you have to look at it. So if I put 0 0.95 here, then you can see I have to look directly at, like this is, like this is not good, but I have to look pretty, the, the vectors have to be pretty similar for it to actually turn true. But if I put a lower number, like 0 0.8, then it does not, then I have to look here for it to become true. So again, the higher the number is, the more detail you have to look at the object basically. If I put 0 0.99, then I basically just have to look at it. Which is, if you want a, a like precise FOV detection. And yeah, that was my that my circuits tutorial on how to make FOV detection in Rec Room. I hope you found this video useful, and if there is any flaws in this video or things that I did not bring up that you think I should have, just let me know. Um, I'll, I, I would love to improve on these tutorials because I love making them and I want the best content possible for you guys. So yeah, it would be it would be nice if you gave me feedback on this just to tell me how well I did or if there's anything or if it's just perfect overall if or if it's absolutely garbage. It's up to you to decide that. <laughs> but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here and be sure to turn on the notifications so you get notified whenever I upload a new video to my channel. And without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!